Last fall, the World Health Organization's International Agency for Research on Cancer labeled red meat a probable carcinogen, suggesting a possible connection to colorectal, pancreatic, and prostate cancers. The revelation stunned unsuspecting carnivores worldwide. I think we think about these guidelines as evolving. Um, it's been a pretty consistent message by many leading organizations, both related to cancer as well as cardiovascular disease, that red meat may increase risk. University of Iowa lecturer and dietitian Dr. Kathy Mellon says the conclusions of the 22 health experts from 10 countries tax on to decades of medical knowledge about diet and disease prevention. And it's difficult to also think about just how broad the category of red meats is to be able to pinpoint, is it one specific type? Is it the preparation method? The WHO poured over 800 epidemiological studies, but scant evidence prevented lamb, pork chops, and beef from being tagged with the most dire classification. That distinction was saved for other American food staples. Hot dogs, cold cuts, and bacon struck out with several global health authorities. There is enough evidence there for many organizations to say we should significantly limit the processed meats in our diet. Last month, the American Institute for Cancer Research and the World Cancer Research Fund reiterated WHO findings that for every 1.8 ounces or 50 grams of processed meat eaten per day, the risk of lower stomach cancers increases by 18 percent. Experts say that's only enough to up the average lifetime risk of developing colon carcinoma from 5 to 6 percent, hardly comparable to cigarettes and asbestos, which now share the category of known carcinogens with salted, cured, fermented, and smoked meats. What do you think of that? I think everything causes cancer anymore, so... In Iowa, the heart of the bacon belt, a state with more pigs than people, many have taken the news in stride. Is it good? It's awesome. I think if you eat anything to an extreme excess, it's probably bad for you. Rather than wallow in disappointment, Go bacon! <laughs> this year's Blue Ribbon Bacon Festival, the Hawkeye State's immensely popular celebration of all things bacon, <laughs> took the occasion to point out that healthy lifestyle changes may tip the scales in favor of moderation. We are here to pump you up with bacon. Sometimes bacon gets a bad rap. With a balanced diet, you know, you can incorporate bacon into your diet and make it a healthy, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's good fat, good protein. Tastefully clad Brooks Reynolds, the self-described face of bacon, and other founding members have seen Bacon Fest grow exponentially since its 2007 kickoff. Everything's good. It's wrapped in bacon. Of course it's good. Over 10,000 people showed up in Des Moines this year, and the party has spread to other states and countries. But in the face of rapid growth, organizers both praise and scrutinize conspicuous consumption. I think it's the perfect food. It's salty, it's sweet. I don't eat bacon every day. I love it, but I don't. You know, they're kind of using scare tactics. You know, hot dogs are bad for you, meat's bad for you. You know, again, everything in moderation. Some dietitians admit quitting cold turkey is probably less than ideal for bacon aficionados. Instead, they say modest dietary adjustments present better options. If we think about the nutrient profile of processed meats, it's really not that great. So if you enjoy bacon, use it to flavor what you're eating, not as your sole protein source at that particular meal. Dr. Mellon adds student reactions to recent nutrition manifestos have run the gamut from confusion and denial to vegetarian considerations. Soy-based meat alternatives have been on the market for years. And proponents argue current methods of livestock and poultry production are environmentally unsustainable. California and Missouri-based Beyond Meat claims plant-based protein is the nutrient's purest form. And rather than let farm animals digest and convert it to meat, they go straight to the source. The company uses a variety of vegetable ingredients, common spices, and proprietary extrusion technology to mimic muscle fiber. But experts caution to check labels. 
those products can oftentimes have just as much sodium, very little potassium in them, which doesn't make them any more nutritious than any other type of processed food too. So the message to consumers is if you're looking for a meat alternative, look for those that are really real foods as that meat alternative. Beef and chicken substitutes are available in many grocery aisles, but stand-ins for pork are largely absent. Livestock is traded in global markets, and pork is the most consumed animal protein on the planet. According to USDA, there are 67.6 million head of hogs across the U.S. Iowa is the nation's number one producer. Figures from the Iowa Pork Producers Association indicate over $6 billion in annual sales. All those cuts and conglomerations are both freshly cooked and cured to extend shelf life. And common preservatives like sodium nitrate and nitrite have become a major target of cancer warnings. But some niche producers assert that an uncured approach, utilizing natural safeguards like celery brine, may be safer and taste better. As minimally processed as possible is what we're about. So, Berkwood Farms, a co-op of about 40 family operations, supplies the Berkshire breed to the Blue Ribbon Bacon Festival, along with a range of products in Iowa and beyond. All of our products are a nitrite-free product, so I don't really consider ours as processed meat, um, like all the other larger corporations. Farmer Randy Hilleman says Berkwood Farms' production techniques have earned a reputation among discerning consumers who yearn for the good old days. It kind of started 20, 30 years ago or 40 years ago when they, they started buying pork by lean premium. And so they got the pigs leaner and leaner and leaner. Well, the flavor is in the fat. And if you don't have any fat, you don't have the flavor. I don't know how many people have said that is the best ham they've ever had in their life, even 80-year-olds. Berkwood Farms hopes the appetite for nostalgia will help grow their business. And as medical authorities seek to first do no harm, debate over meat products will be processed by all stakeholders. For Market to Market, I'm Josh Bittner.